Good afternoon to all of you. It's a great pleasure today to bring you a topic that's very, very important and dear to me because I have relied on good stocking and compression fitting in my practice for, for over 35 years. And uh, I'm delighted to have with, with us today, Claudia Boyle. And she is the second generation owner of Vandriel's Medical for over 35 years. She has worked closely with physicians from, from all around the Chicago area and, and beyond uh, in, in helping all of us to uh, understand and get the best products for our patients. And you know, it's very important uh, that uh, there are many brands of stockings out there. And because of cost containment, each brand has like 12 or 14 sizes. So one size does not fit all. And one of the things that you need Claudia about or someone like her is to fit the, the, the patient, take the patient's parameters, their foot shapes, their leg shape, and put them into the stocking that fits them the best. And the only way you can do that is with somebody that really understands what's going on. And uh, she, what she loves best about her work is being able to use her many years of experience to, uh, to help patients receive compression wear that is best suited to them. And I can tell you, it's unbelievable to me. It's never about the dollar. Oftentimes she's turned down things and, uh, and, and, and uh, higher expensive things because that wasn't the best thing for the patient. So anyway, it's a great pleasure to be here with you today, uh, Claudia, and um, uh, welcome. Thank you, Joe. It's, it's been a, it's, it's a joy to hear about all our years together and it's a delight to be here with you today. Today, we're going to talk about um, uh, compression stockings and how they fit into uh, patient care, uh, among other ways of, of treating certain medical conditions. Compression stockings, play a really important role in um, the treatment of, of many medical conditions. And today we're gonna to talk about um, how we choose or, uh, a compression stocking for a particular patient. So compression stockings are used to address a variety of vascular and lymphatic disorders, including reducing the risk of blood clots, treating symptoms of acute blood clots, and preventing some long-term complications as well as treating venous insufficiency and other treat, um, conditions. Stockings work by compressing superficial veins, tissues, and capillaries so that blood is pushed back towards the deep vein that run inside the muscles of the leg. By compressing the calf muscles as well, they uh, uh, enhance the natural contraction and release of those muscles and promote an increased flow of the venous return. And they need to do this by applying really good pressure with minimal constriction. So we're trying to, we're looking for a garment that's gonna apply the most good with the least amount of bad. However, despite their claims, the truth is that all compression stockings are not created equally. Some are therapeutic and others are definitely not. You know, any stocking can claim to be a medical compression stocking. There's no standards in the U.S., unfortunately, that would regulate these claims. So almost all uh, stockings that, are, uh, that have some lycra to them uh, will call themselves a compression stocking. So we, uh, I have been taught, and most of this comes from interacting with Claudia over the years, is high quality stockings, of course, have therapeutic value, true gradient compression, support the circulation, reduce edema, reduce the risk of DVT or prevent the post syndrome in some cases and provide comfort. Whereas poor quality stockings have limited or no therapeutic value, definitely constrict and bind in many cases, and they're not act actual good gradient compression. They create deep indentations, do not reduce DVT risk, and many times they're pa painful or uncomfortable. Unfortunately, there are no standards in the U.S. for compression stockings, and uh, uh, much like supplements. In this country, uh, a stocking can uh, claim to be uh, anything it wants to claim, and there's no regulatory body that will check or test that. So how can you tell a high-quality grade stocking from a cheap imposter, Claudia? <laughs> we have ways. <laughs> there are clues. There's clues in the sizing, uh, in the shape, and in the pressure of the stocking. So uh, a good stocking uh, uh, versus a bad stock, good stockings will have greater sizing options. Uh, bad stockings will have very few sizing options. 
Um, another way is to compare the smallest size, physically, visually compare the smallest size stocking to the largest size stocking. Um, and, uh, and then also to check the compression, the tension at the ankle versus the tension at the top of the leg. Um, and a good stocking is going to be tighter at the bottom, looser at the top, a bad stocking the other way around. So here's the various uh, sizing charts uh, that we see. And what Claudia has pointed out to us is that um, uh, sizing charts that have a number of different sizes. There's, there's uh, seven sizes here, and, and, and then there's uh, the various dimensions. And down here, there's five different sizes. Whereas they're good, they're, the sizing charts, that shows you these are stockings that are individually adaptable to different people's needs. And this is what I meant. Sometimes a stocking from this company or another company would fit you better, and she will be able to determine that. Bad stockings have fewer, fewer options. And as you can see down here, this, this thing here, whereas it, 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 the size is just barely by shoe size, uh, that's uh, totally inappropriate. Exactly. You know, it really has to be measured by circumference. Um, <laughs> otherwise, it really uh, has no bearing on how the stocking will fit on your legs. So some of the bad stockings will fit by height and weight. Um, there's no direct correlation to leg size. Shoe size, clearly no direct correlation. You could have a, a size 10 shoe uh, and weigh 300 pounds or 100 pounds. So we're looking for a stocking that sizes by ankle and calf circumferences. It needs to be both. Um, we always need to have options for long, shorter and longer legs. Stockings that are too long will always constrict, either at the ankle or at the calf. That's where a lot of people um, have their discomfort. When pain is created, it's often because the stocking is too long um, and there's extra fabric that's binding up. We want to have a minimum of eight sizing options. We need to have at least uh, a wide range of circumference options, a minimum of two length options in a knee high, um, and then uh, th that all those things together are indication of good compression stocking. Now with bad stockings, uh, as Claudia just pointed out, the ridiculous notion that you can size them by foot size is totally inappropriate. And sizing by calf circumference also is totally inappropriate. Having no sizing option for sh large short legs and then having fewer than six, eight sizing options. All of these are, are, are warning signs for all of you. When you see any of these, beware. Exactly. So if uh, uh, one way to really see uh, if a compression stocking is sort of a high quality and measured by circumference is to compare the smallest size of the stocking to the largest size. So on the left here, we have a, a pair of good fitting stockings and you can see that the larger size on the bottom is, is wider than the small size, but is no longer because as people's circumference increase, their height does not necessarily increase. Uh, whereas on the right, the longest size almost looks, uh, the largest size on the bottom almost looks narrower. It's narrower, it's really just longer uh, and it's not going to fit a larger, wider leg any better than the, than the smaller size. In fact, maybe worse. So good stockings have a larger size that looks wider, not only a small, than the smaller size, not longer. And those larger size stockings, if they're appropriate, not only is the calf bigger, but also the foot is bigger and the ankle is bigger and it just accommodates a bigger leg. And remember that larger legs are not always longer legs. Exactly. So, yeah, it, it, and I wanna emphasize this again because we see this mistake being made so often. Um, because uh, In an inexpensive stocking, if, if, a, if a patient is uncomfortable, they'll often go out and try to find a larger size, you know, get me a 4X or a 3X uh, because this one is so painful. Um, and when the stocking is made badly, that longer stocking is, is really just a longer tight stocking. And you're actually doing the opposite of what you're trying to do when you increase the sizing. You're actually creating more constriction. So it's a little sidebar here. Um, the, uh, the surgical stockings, and we'll get back to that later, uh, have had uh, issues with, uh, with skin problems. And oftentimes that's because people have large thighs. And so they're, they're put into the large size stockings, but the, the thigh isn't large enough and that causes right. terrible problems. So in, uh, in the picture on the left, the calf is wider than the ankle. And in many, for most people who need compression, that is the case. Very, 
it's uncommon that the ankle and the calf are the same size in a, in a normal and certainly in a swollen leg. Um, so uh, we, we want to see a stocking where the calf is larger. If we see a stocking that's shaped like a, a tube straight up and down, that's generally a dead giveaway that that stocking is cheaply made uh, and will tend to constrict. So good stockings, as we say, and, and again, as I said with Claudia said, <clears throat> we can't emphasize this too much. Uh, good stockings, is the, the ankle is smaller and tighter than the top of the stocking, and the top band is the widest part of the stocking and stretches easily. You know, and then this one again, the bad stocking is just uh, too, too tight at the top. And it's a good experiment. An easy, a really easy thing to check is to take your hands and sort of grasp the stocking on either side of the, at the ankle section and pull on that and then do the same at the top. Um, and if the top part feels tighter and often that top band um, is actually tighter than the ankle, which means wearing that stocking is not going to be uh, create an upflow in circulation. It's actually going to constrict and bind. So this is the uh, the so-called uh, thromboembolic deterrence, and that's a brand name, but it's just such a common thing. It's like band aid, which is also mm -hmm. a brand name. But here you can see the difference between a regular and a large stocking, and uh, the the uh, the large stocking is mostly just longer, and that is a terrible mistake, because if those stockings don't work well. Uh, then um, they are actually counterproductive. As you said, Dr. Caprini, the, uh, the, the thigh high stockings are even a bigger issue because on the size chart of many of the uh, TEDs, the, there is no difference in the thigh circumference from the smallest to the largest. Uh, so it's, it's generally a poor choice, partly because of constriction and partly uh, the way the stocking is made, there's no heel pocket in that stocking. They just sort of make an, a, a larger opening for the heel um, and very often people who come in wearing TEDs have this uh, deep creasing above and below uh, where the foot flexes uh, because that stocking is just not constructed for an ambulatory patient. So the bottom line, high quality compression stocking is far more likely to provide real therapeutic results than a cheap stocking. Cheap compression socks can actually constrict causing binding in some parts of the leg as Claudia has just talked about, especially around the ankle and increased swelling in, in other cases. Yeah, buyer beware is the motto here. So uh, you need to educate yourself. Best to work with a qualified fitter. Uh, it's very difficult to know um, yourself without knowing all the different types of stockings. Uh, uh, how, what would be a good match for your particular leg at what compression um, level that you need? So uh, educate yourself and find yourself a good fitter and you'll find a compression stocking that serves your needs and can, you can wear comfortably. So Claudia, I have a few questions for you. Uh, first of all, you're going to take a flight. So you get to the airport and you, you're, 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 uh, you're reminded that, uh, uh, geez, when we fly, we should have a flight socks. So let's go to the store uh, in, the, in, the, in uh, the, the shop in the airport and, and pick up a pair of these stockings and we'll be all set. Great idea, not. <laughs> so uh, invari invariably, uh, flight socks are tend to fall into the shoe size category. Um, every flight sock, because when I go to the airport, I, I check those flight socks to see what they're like, and they're invariably too tight at the top, uh, and you're going to create a constriction uh, there. The other thing is, you know, the people at the store can't help. Anybody can read a size chart, and I can tell you that um, I, I see a lot of size charts that when I, when I examine the stocking and I try a stocking on, um, there's, it, you know, it just doesn't do what it, the sizing claims it's going to do. So it's really kind of dangerous to just before you get on a flight and put yourself at a high risk to, um, you know, do a little experiment to see if maybe this one might work for you when it could very well do the opposite of what you want it to do. So the next question uh, comes with, with a little bit of a personal uh, uh, information for me. And I had a situation with my foot and my ankle after a severe injury. And after a while, I was able to get into a stocking and I got into a stocking and this was, uh, I was uh, uh, in another state. And when I came back, I went to Claudia and I said, Claudia, these stock are just not doing the job right. And she looked down and she said, you know, Joe, she said, you have a duck foot. And <laughs> you need a stocking that's built for someone who has a wide foot, not a slender foot. You're in one of those real slender ballerina foot stockings. So. And she said, also, the weave of this particular stocking is, is not good. 
and compared for your leg, it's a good stocking. They're very high quality stock. Both were very uh, reputable companies, very, mm -hmm. very good companies. But the idea was that then she fit me with the right uh, stocking for my duck foot, if you will. And because of that, um, you know, essentially I lived happily ever after. <laughs> the reason for that introduction was I get these comments all the time. Well, Dr. Caprini, I, I called up this shop and this fitter wanted so much money for the stocking. So I checked it on the internet. It was much less expensive. So well, well, I'm just going to go to the internet and get the socks. What do you think about that, Claudia? Yeah, it, I mean, the, the fact that it's complicated by the fact that a good stocking can be a good stocking for someone else, but not for you. So a lot of what we do is really, I call myself a stocking yenta. I'm looking for, you know, what are the features of your leg? What are the needs of your leg? Um, and what's a good stocking? And unless you're somebody that's putting stockings on people all the time, um, you're not going, you're not going to have any idea. You're not going to know that because those little um, features of the stocking are nowhere on the box. You know, it's just each stocking has a little personality and there's always going to be one better suited. Um, and, you know, the people, the internet can show you a size chart. You're kind of guessing after that. Another thing that I all too frequently encountered in my practice, I would fit a person with the stockings and they come back for the follow-up visit and they say, oh, I visited your fitter. These are wonderful. My legs feel great. My swelling is down. I can walk better. My legs are less tired and aching. How long do I have to wear these? <laughs> and <laughs> Claudia? Well, you know, as long as that leg wants to swell, you're going <laughs> to you're going to have to wear that stocking. So, and and really, you know, people begin wearing compression stockings for different reasons. So, if you're wearing a stocking because your leg is swelling, then you have to wear that stocking as long as your leg wants to swell. And for some people, that's lifetime, and other people, it's a more temporary condition. But typically, vascular stuff does not get better over time. Uh, typically, it, it's not a problem you can ignore and hope it goes away. It's just going to become almost always more critical down the line. So getting into a compression stocking that you can wear comfortably uh, before it's a crisis and doing that on a regular basis is going to be uh, give you the best results and the happiest life. <laughs> Another uh, situation is that I've had some very uh, sort of glamorous people in my practice who say, you know, I can't wear these. These stockings are ugly. And men and women too. Yeah. I can't, I can't wear these. You know, I'm playing golf and I wear shorts and I can't wear those things. I look like a, a, a funny person. So can I just wear them at night? <laughs> I mean, this is one of those where we all kind of do a little collective roll of the eyes uh, because no, you can't just wear them overnight. Uh, uh, vascular problems uh, are really gravity problems. You know, if you were lying down all the time, you wouldn't have had that problem in the first place. But um, when you're lying down, your leg manages the return circulation far better uh, than it does when you're standing, but you've got all day of standing where the problem is getting worse and worse and worse. And wearing it at nighttime is sort of, you know, uh, what gilding the lily. Your, your legs are already doing better at nighttime. It's really during the day that they need the support. So unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, what about um, patients that we run into that have issues putting the stockings on or off? Yeah, that's a really, that's a, a really common problem. Obviously, the higher the compression, um, the harder that is to do. So there's there, there's several ways to address that. There's a lot of a lot of it is technique, um, and there's a lot of uh, there are ways to certainly make it easier to get on and off. There are many good application and removal devices out there um, that are fairly simple, fairly straightforward. There's a lot of them that are kind of crazy, but uh, almost never necessary. There's some very simple devices that will help you on and off, uh, and we're fortunate that now there's a whole other category of compression garment. Um, which is a strap, strap compression or Velcro compression wrap, which has made it possible for uh, patients who could not don a, a higher compression stocking to get the compression that they need. Well, thank you very much, Claudia. Uh, I would like to uh, thank the audience for listening to this uh, presentation. I think it's been very important and this is good knowledge for all of us to have. And I want you all to stay tuned because in our next video, we're going to learn the secrets of the giraffe leg. So with that, again, I'd like to thank you very much, Claudia, for your participation in this. Thank and you I, for inviting me, Joe, I appreciate this. Yeah, and, and you've been a great resource for our practice and continue to be for the vascular surgery practice, as well as a lot of other practices in the Chicago area. So everyone, please visit uh, my website, uh, YouTube site, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, 
uh, for more information. And I hope you all have a great day. And thank you very much for listening.